So this is how it's better. Got, you start that song lately. On the farm in Clunclever. Clunclever. This is Helen, the keeper of the history of the Faunins. And she's going to so tell us about it. There used to be it. a lane mm -hmm. going up along here, and on your left there was a row of beautiful pine trees, like the ones that are over there in the distance. On your left. And you would come up the lane, which is now very mucky. The lane came up here, and the first thing you would come to would have been shed. Be careful, lads, this is very mucky. Very mucky. <laughs> We're talking muck here, people. I mean, I'm sinking, and I'm just realized these boots are not waterproof. Uh oh. <laughs> might be an easy way to get across there. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> um, so, coming up here, you would turn in about here and there was a turf shed. So the turf would have been collected during the summer and that would be their fuel for the fire all during the winter. Beautiful, beautiful smell of turf. And past the turf shed on the left was a huge big hay shed. And when we used to come down here on our summer holidays, there'd be half of the hay left from the winter. And um, my grandfather had rigged up a swing in the hay shed. Nice. And Paddy Farrell was the postman. <laughs> And we would be playing in the hay shed and Paddy Farrell, the postman, used to cycle up here and he'd leave his bicycle up against the shed and he'd pick some nettles and whoever was on the swing, he'd stand below them and you had to keep swinging higher and higher <laughs> because if you came back down, the back of your bare legs would be stung on the nettles. <laughs> um, so this was, um, this was the buyer. I'm sorry, that's the back of the house. So my grandfather used to come out because he didn't want us playing in the hay. He was afraid we'd fall out of the hay shed. So over there on the, the very gable end, there was a side door out and Granddaddy used to come out. The door had a squeak on it. So when he'd open the door, we'd hear him. So we'd lie flat down on top of the hay. <laughs> and um, he, he didn't catch us. So this poor is the remnants of the byre where the cows would be brought in to be milked. these cement walls to separate where the cows would. So the cows would be brought up from the field in here and you'd have two cows and two cows and you'd come out with your little three-legged stool and you'd sit and you'd milk the cow. And my uncle Steve 
used to, the kittens used to gather at the door. <laughs> and if you got better at it here, you're milking the cow and then you could sh just squirt the milk. And the cats <laughs> would jump to get it and lick it. So you'd have a little little audience. Uh, but again, if Granny caught you doing that, wasting the milk on the kittens now, they would, they'd be hell to pay. <laughs> <laughs> this used to be all um, stone. And this was, here's the daddy horse now. <laughs> Field of horses. This used to be called, this was the street. This was all beautiful tiled paving stone. The whole way down. And Granddaddy would not even allow a blade of grass to come up on it or he'd be bending down and picking it up. And we've numbers of photographs at home of Granny and Granddaddy standing here and we're getting into the car and going down and they're waving goodbye. <laughs> we'd open the radio, be put out on the bed. And the chair is brought out, or people will be sitting up along here <laughs> to listen to the match. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. He's friendly. Hello. We're going to be going in here. It's a little scary. <sighs> the water up from the well. The buckets used to be left there with a muslin cover on the top of them. And um, there was a dresser here, a beautiful kind of pull down dresser. And all of the cooking was done on the open fire, on the um, on the S hooks and things like that. So the, the pots of potatoes and the porridge and whatever. Um, and then later on, there was a cooker put in here. Yeah. And that was Granny and Granddaddy's bedroom. And that was the good room, the upper room, mm. which was brought for guests. Mm -hmm. But very rarely used because everybody used to come in here. A couch come bed and that's where I used to sleep if I was here. And my two brothers used to be down in that room. And T.P. used to, um, his picture was up on the wall, so I used to go back to T.P. And mm -hmm. here, there's a big grandfather clock here. And when we'd all be in bed, Granny and Granddaddy would be banking the fire so it wouldn't go completely out, so it'd be easy to light it up again in the morning. And they'd have made the porridge and have it sitting on the fire. And Granddaddy used to wind the grandfather clock. And as they were doing that, they were saying the rosary. Grandfather would say it, you know, our father, and then Granny would answer. Mm. And I'd be going to sleep, and you could hear the tick, tick, tick of the grandfather clock, and then the murmurs of the two of them praying. Ah, oh. the table, and he gets the flour out, and he show me how to mix it, etc. And I look at him, and he's mixing this up, and I said, Granddaddy, there's something moving in there. <laughs> what? What? Gets the rolling pin, and he bang, 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 bang. Nothing moving now, you know? Uh. <laughs> oh. So he puts it all together and puts it into a skillet pot and hangs it on the S hook on the fire. And when it's cooking and whatever, the smell was absolutely delicious. So when we took it out and he was cutting it open. Did I care whether there was anything moving or not? It was delicious. My mother was horrified when I told her that story afterwards. She said there were probably flower weevils. Yes. <laughs>